Good morning, my friends. This is Jeremiah Hoppin for another tutorial from the Tutorial Brothers. I'm in LW After Effects CS4. It's just going to be a quick tutorial. Um, we'll touch on the ba on a few bases, keying, um, some little bit of curves, and um, motion, uh, a little bit of motion tracking too. So I'm just going to go ahead and click here, New Composition. This comes up every time you open CS4. Um, 175 frames is what I'm looking for. If you're looking for something different, okay. Alright. So now I'm just going to go into here, Projects. Double click here. And I will drag in this one. I know what it is. I've looked at it previously, so. That was nothing. To tell you the truth. Now this is something me and a friend did quite recently. Just drag it right here. And I'll go ahead and fit it up. So it fits proper. Um, what happens here is just basically recharge and clash. That's about it. So first off, I'm going to slow this down a bit. I'm going to show you a quick way on how to do that. Just go down to here, right click that, go up to the time, time stretch. See, I used to go down here and try to find it. Um, it would be down in like effect, and then time, that you don't get the right stuff down there. So you just go up to time, then time stretch, and then change it to whatever. Remember, mine's in frames too, so... I'll go ahead and set it to 200 frames. And that gives us what we have here. Just a slow, hold on a second, just random preview it. It'll just give us a slow charge of what all I need. It'll help me with the rest of what we're doing, what we're going to do here, so. pretty good. So you just get the hit. Alright, so now I am going to drag let's go up here up and just get a there we go just get a Fuse. This is a little little deal here. Just because this is how I'm going to teach you how to uh, motion track, I guess. See, if I put this in here right now, that doesn't look very good, does it? <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this tool right here. Well, first thing I add an effect, and I'm going to come over here to keying. And I will take the color key. See this eyedropper? This is the color that it will key out. So if I did this, not much is going to happen because there's no blue in this particular selected frame. So I'm going to click this eyedropper, select the black, and you know, that's pretty bad right now. So I'll bring this tolerance up to 48. Depending on your project, it will work differently. Um, keep that at zero, I suppose. Feather. We'll take feather up to 8.4, I suppose. 8.4, 8.5. It just gives it a better look. Uh, looks a little bit more natural. So now, I'm just going to put a flame right here. But in order to do that, you know, it, it is going to be over anything here. In order to do that, it doesn't match the movement of the camera here, you'll see. Notice how this is staying right there as the camera moves to the left. So, I'll fix that. There is other ways to do this, but this is how I'll do it. Since this, um, th this needs to get slowed down anyway. So I'll go over here to stabilize motion, or 
I'll go right here, click the untitled, right click, go stabilize motion. And don't select this exterior one, or, well, you could really select this interior box here, or this exterior box here. All you're doing is you're moving it to a point, my bad, you're moving it to a point where a dark point like that, or out here, that you'll be able to track it at. I'm taking it to the top of this pole here. Just make sure it's some point of high contrast. I had a bad camera, so I can't do something that high. But just do it to a high contrast point. You'll notice it's magnified, so you can see where you're taking it to. Go ahead and place it right there. Make sure you're at the beginning of your frames. And click this. This will start rendering it forwards to track it. And that's how our camera moved. So I'm going to go apply and X and, X and Y. That's the uh, axis they're talking about because I don't have a Z axis for this. Go ahead and see how this turned out real quick. Here. Turn this to half just so it's a little easier to, easier to view. Solo watch this just so we don't see the fuse there either as well. So So we have is a perfectly still image of us charging. This black bar is no good there, so I'm going to go ahead and fix that. Go ahead and unkeyframe the, uh, turn off the keyframes there. Go ahead and close this out. Unsolo it. <clears throat> now we're just going to scale this up a tad. Probably move it over a tad too, because we saw how it moved. see these moving All right we see we still have some problems there so we're gonna go ahead and drag it a little bit more and scale it up a tad so we don't see the other guy Our other characters sneaking up on this guy I guess That looks pretty good. No black whatsoever. So now <coughs> I'm going to move this fuse to where it looks realistic. And also, I'm just going to shave this bottom part off here since that's not part of the actual fire. Um, so I'm going to take this mask tool here, make sure the flame is selected. Take this mask tool, zoom in here, just cut it off. And now we're going to go ahead and click this, hit M. That'll open up our mask. And click this arrow here, go subtract. So it shows the top of the flame. So go ahead and turn our mask, view masking off. Close this out, open it up again. Go ahead and change the feather so it looks a little better here. It's a little bit more like part of the uh, ground here. Turn the expansion, keep the expansion, I suppose. Um, let's see here. Um, we will turn the opacity a tad down. Zoom out. Looking good. Now, as you see here, the fire's moving quickly, but we're moving slowly, so we should probably change that here. So we're just going to use the same uh, way we did it last time. Right click on the track here. Time. 
type stretch over here oh you know what this isn't going to work because it's not the same length see it's already that long so I could go here go to the time stretch it saved it go ahead and uh, copy this bring it up here paste that's the length that it'll be so now you've got slow motion flame that looks pretty good and slow motion charge and if we were going to do something different we would probably track motion at a null object and it gets a whole lot more extensive but just for now that's about all I wanted to show you all guys thanks for watching this has been Jeremiah